old Christmas. Caput apri de furro. Bredens lattice domino. Ye modern throng whose tinsel joys reveal the strained and labored ecstasies you feel, whose empty pastimes hold a spurious bliss, and feebly copy brighter days than this, your clumsy games suspend and pause to hear of genuine mirth and ancient Christmas cheer, with that some druid wise and mystic lore might waft me backward to the scenes of yore, midst happier years my wandering soul detain, and let me dwell in Anna's virtuous reign, warm in the honest glow of pure content, and share the boons of rustic merriment. Awake, Pierian muse, and call to view the snow-clad groves and plains my grandsires knew. Bring back the winding road and neat-clipped hedge that primely skirts the forest's shadowy edge. Revive the picture and adroitly weave o'er all the subtle spell of Christmas Eve. Hark to the merry strains of Yuletide song as the full coach to Norfolk flies along, its ample room scarce able to confine the homebound crowd whose voices gaily join. See the stout driver whose Ubescent face grows redder at each wayside stopping place, and the flushed passengers, their cheeks aglow with the cold air and gently stirring snow, the yon yon sturdy lads in height of glee, from classics rod and masters precept free, read in each laughing face and manly smile. The future glories of Britannia's isle. Swift whir the wheels and smartly snaps the whip. The swaying coach assumes a livelier clip. Down the long road in majesty we fly, and hundred cots and hamlets sweeping by, whilst now and then a rural wain we sight, high piled with holly for the festive night. Up the steeple slope, steep slope, our cumbrous chariot creaks, attends the crest, and lowlier meadows seeks. Before I, our gaze, the steepled town expands, and in graceful eyes survey the extended lands. Through melting clouds, the frosty Moonlight gleams and gilds the picture with bewitching beams. Our spire and roof and genial radiance steals, and every grove the pleasing magic feels. Now rolls the couch through many a cobbled street, where well stocked shops the thrifty buyer greet. A gaping crew our rattling course attend, and urchins. Hail the driver as their friend. The tavern gate at length our flight concludes. Or varied solace suits our several moods. Apicius in the spacious kitchen spies. The hams and bacon that delight his eyes. And stout Lucullus seeks the sweet relief of hot Plum pudding, musky ale, and beef. The important coachman struts in pompous pride, whilst four fresh horses to the coach are tied. The travelers take their places one by one, and the long journey is once more begun. Brief is our ride, ere through the bordering trees, the watchful eye, a lighted window, sees our travels done. The lumbering coach we leave, and the lodge gates our weary forms receive. Here Granny Goodwife, to an infant train, repeats her oft-told legends once again, tells of the sheeted vision at the hall, and how the spectra scales the garden wall. The withered crone with joy our footsteps 
hears, And greets her former charge with genuine tears. Dear wrinkled ancient, faithful nurse of yore, Who nursed ourselves and nursed our sire before, The bliss of home, what heavenly raptures vie, With the sweet joys that in our birthplace lie, Each stone and timber hollowed by the past, where countless generations breed their last. No inch of ground in all those acres wide but bears a symbol of ancestral pride. In park and mansion, wall and hedge, we trace the mystic aura of our honored race. Along the well-kept walks, we quickly tread and seek the lights of home that gleam ahead. About our feet, a canine legion bark that know their master even in the dark. The full-orbed moon with intermittent rays About the lawns and terrace gardens plays. On the white paths, unusual shadows throws And makes a fairy landscape as it glows. Now opens the wide door from whence there floats A merry discord from unnumbered throats. Tis Christmas Eve and all the household join In revels fitting to our ancient line. Master and servant, each glad rite go through, and the old Saturnalian pledge renew. The servile throng in boisterous games disport, while the staid guests to milder joys resort. Bright Christmas candles the vast hall illume, and sprigs of holly deck each spacious room. The mistletoe in splendor is displayed to tempt the swain and trap the unwary maid. But over all the rest in stately fame, see the great yule log with its fulgent flame. The lordly log, a mighty heat exhales. exhales. And over the chill of winter air prevails, gives an eternal promise of the spring that Saul, the sun, turned back to northern climes will bring the solstice day our pagan fathers kept and hailed the turning sun whilst nature slept their simple fames with evergreen entwined to fix the coming days of warmth in mind succeeding years and elaborate forms impose and the plain feast to saturnalia grows but though the throng the so-called Roman god adore, the ancient customs linger as before, an age still newer blends the heathen glee with the glad rites of Christ's nativity. Yet firm through every change of outward show, we keep the ancestral feast of long ago, fair as the glow that from the yule log spreads is the warm welcome every fester sheds. Patriarchal grace the squire imparts, a genial mirth, and lights the coldest hearts. On the mixed crowd a family blessing lays, and wakes the Christmas cheer of former days. Here's sport, a merry train of young and old, aunts, uncles, cousins, kindred shy and bold. The ample supper every care dispels, and each glad guest in happy concord dwells. With yuletide songs, the time-blessed roof awakes, while the gray harper into music breaks. Feasting and joy the spacious mansion fill, nor dares intrude one jarring note of ill. Upon the oaken floor the children find ecstatic bliss and toys of every kind. Less simple gifts the elder throng reward, but all the partake. The season's blessed accord, now comes the dance where each airy school of jigs and capers claims alternate rule. The honest squire leads forth his gentle spouse, and with a rigadoon excites the house. Mole Pately and the homely country dance by with the latest tripping steps from France. Terpsichor, amazed, the scene observes and flees the unfamiliar dips and curves, yet more of honest joy therein resides than in cold London's stateliest turns and glides. 
The dancing o'er we climb the broad oak stair, And seek the bedside with an evening prayer. On the still night in sacred chorus floats The weights, sweet harmony, and faint-born notes. Such choirs, methinks, remind the grateful earth Of herald angels at our Savior's birth. Thus lulled with liquid song, divinely blessed, on Christmas Eve we softly sink to rest. Hail to the holy morn, when joy and peace reign o'er the land, and every boon increase. A golden sun encircling park awakes, and gaily glitters on the ice-bound lakes. Each frosted lawn and whitened terrace gleams with glowing splendor in the rising beams, while silver chimes from gorgeous spires proclaim the listening meads with great Messiah's fame. In family chapel we devoutly hear the virtuous squire read forth the word of cheer. Then to the morning meal and daily walk where innocence enjoys its harmless talk. In ordered gardens we at ease converse and the fond bliss of Christmas tide rehearse. Now sounds the bell from that proud steepled fane, where in the parson holds magnetic rain. Down the long slope with reverent steps we go, and meet the peasants from the town below. Each rural clown his Sunday raiment wears, and every face a smile of greeting bears. Behold the churchyard where in silence lie the honest villagers of days gone by. From such brave blood great England rose of yore. God grant the future may produce us more. Within the church a fervent sermon rings, and the full choir a pious anthem sings. The rural choristers chant loud and strong, and have in spirit what they lack in song. The black-gowned chaplain, modest of his wit, reads the wise precepts other parsons writ. No laurels for himself he seeks to gain, but gives his flock the best his books contain. The service done our genial squire extends, an invitation to his humble friends. Up to the hall in many an awkward group, the gaping swains and happy plowmen troop. Beneath the master's roof they take the feast that richly waits the lowliest and the least. With merry pastimes stir the quiet air and bless their patron for the liberal fare. Twas thus the Romans at the season gave Saturnalian license to the serf and slave. Our British race, the ancient gift, improve and treat the peasant with paternal love. Assist, choice, gay, gastronomic muse, Whilst I, in noble strains, sing pork and Christmas pie, what quill like mine can more than half afford a proper notion of the yuletide board? Quick to the hall the numerous crowd pour in at the sharp summons of the rolling pin, saucers and flagons, cups, and many a plate. In festive eagerness the spread await, the impatient throng half grudge the pious space, that the good squire consumes in saying grace, and from each throat a grateful sigh is drawn as the boar's head in majesty comes on. The stout gray butler punctuously sustains the silver plate and shoes officious pains. One on each side two sober menials bear, refulgent dips with ceremonious care. With rosemary the platter is bedecked, whilst harper's chords increase the glad effect. The ready crowd an Oxford song repeat, and laud an ancient style, the roasted meat. The college Latin, pleasing to recite, improves the feast and whets the appetite. But not alone the stately boar is placed to please the palate and reward the taste. Huge sirloin mountains dot the damask field, and peacock pies a haunting odor yield. 
puddings and gravies, sauces, roasts, and stews, and chant the dinner, and defy the muse. Now comes the servant band with brush and tray, to clear the remnants of the feast away. Upon the board, the wassail bowl is laid, filled with the nectar by old precepts made. To each, the silver dish is passed around, whilst merry wassail songs aloft resound. In ancient fashion, every guest partakes, and the rich wine unwanted brilliance wakes. Alas, that man should ever be so prone to seek a bacchic humor not his own. Quips, jests, and stories now untrammeled start, and a harmless gossip plays a pleasing part. Legends and anecdotes appear in state and grow the larger as they circulate. Even the staid parson drops his sober mien and joins the others in the jovial scene. But mad hilarity at length subsides, and prattling youth its sweeter joys provides. The hall is cleared, and all the infant throng conduct their pastimes with the verting song. Unreason's abbot full dominion claims, and leads the children in their ancient games, quaint murmurs through the spacious house parade, and former times in costume are displayed. Old Father Christmas dances hand in hand with some odd Indian of western land. Turks jostle roundheads, all the mimic train, obey the laws of Saturn's festive reign. Gay joys. Drury Lane, such acting ne'er beheld, and Covenant Gardens masks are here excelled. Frolic and fun and laughing pantomime surpass description and confound our rhyme. The evening shades touch many a tired head as the young rompers Breathless climb to bed. Our older band in fireside comfort sit and tell our tales or try our shafts of wit. O'er all the company a peace descends whilst the great log its cheering radiance lends. To every mind there comes a thankful thought for the rich blessing that in the day hath brought and many a scoffer bred in London air Midst this calm scene, sends up a silent prayer. Here, virtue rules, and each contented swain enjoys the bliss of his paternal plane. A life like this, magnificent heaven designed to lift the soul and soothe the fretful mind. Why must our modern wits in scorn refuse? These rural realms their sires were proud to choose. Above the frozen grove the moon appears, and tender light the quiet garden cheers. The winding walks, the fountain, and the green take on the semblance of a fairy scene. Light dancing o'er the sod, an elfin crew and fond imagination come to view, and friendly pines and rhythmic measures sway, their patron nymphs responsive to the play. All the soft picture seems alive with grace, and peopled with a sweet ethereal race. Through the still air bewitching spirits glide, and spread the sorcery of Christmas tide. Must I awake to find these visions flown, the past long dead and happiness unknown? Have honest merriment and rural cheer gone with the fleeting snows of yesteryear? Unhappy age whose joys so ill contrast with the spontaneous pleasures of the past, where in our languid youth the gloom resort, and listless children must be taught their sport, whose art the stamp of waning power confess, and hide their weakness in eccentric dress. Canst thou not see the many woes proceed from false ambition, commerce, haste, and greed? Wise is the man who spurns the seething times, nor madly up the hill of Plutus climbs, rests on his own hereditary soil, 
a remote from care or avaricious broil. His father's place assumes and keeps his name on the calm records of agrestic fame. For such an one, the field of learning waits, and art attends his hospital gates. Tis his to feed the flame of sense and wit, and ancient lore to future times transmit. Preserve the good his grandsires proved before, and drive the wolf of dullness from the door. Each gothic novelty with skill attack, and bring the grace of former ages back. Ye hoary groves, whose many centuried oaks the wistful bard with longing lyre invokes. Look down once more in your imperial state on such a race as made old England great. View once again the hearty rural squire, whose liberal soul contained a generous fire, whose mild dominion swayed the peasant band and spread contentment through the grateful land. Such and such only can the past revive and keep our well-loved Christmas joys alive. Meanwhile, the muse in reminiscent strain forgets the years and sings those joys again. Without the pain and fear of sin. Connect to what is here and it cycles again.